question. But one thing I thought we could segue from is obviously there was a, there was another piece of news, which was one from, from, to be fair, one of the formerly anonymous leakers. So who knows how true it is, which was that apparently Misfits might just leave LEC entirely. That is the rumor. Maybe they are one of the teams that cashes out, leaves the space and someone else buys in. Now, obviously, most people are going to get caught in what I think is the boring cul-de-sac conversation. Like, what if Karma and Corp was the last team? Like, everyone's had that discussion about a million fucking times and it never goes beyond what if Karma and Corp joined. There's no interesting yeah. take anyone has. So let's skip okay. that. I just wanted also, to do the take. Yeah, go on. Just saying, that's probably not happening. By the time this also releases... Probably not, yeah, no. By the time this, the, that this releases, the word on the street is that actually Heretics is the team. The team from LVP is the team that's actually going to be yes, buying the it's spot, a Spanish so. org. Yes, yes. they might know it from CS, etc. Basically, the interesting part to me, I think it's more interesting, I want to get your guys' take on, is I think it's actually the implication about what it means about teams like Misfits. Basically, teams that traditionally, if you look at the history of LEC, have been like bottom half table teams and stuff. Because the vibe goes like this. A lot of people, you might remember the infamous Carlos comment when they were making LEC about how there's like a lot of orgs are like parasites and they're just going to sort of like take a slot up, but they're not going to do any work and they're not going to have marketing and they're not going to make merchandise and they're just going to sit back and they're going to share part of the rev and they're just going to sit on a spot basically. Like essentially that's the discussion I get. I get the implication we can have about this, which is if someone like Misfits is going to leave, obviously Schalke already left last year. They got the 26 million euros. That's what a lot of people are now looking at. Right, they're basically, if you're a fan and you don't know the business of League of Legends, if you're the smaller orgs, maybe not Misfits because they went for the super team, but you think of like Astralis, SK Gaming, these are the teams that like, if you can really get, we're, we're obviously imagining the price is the same. If you knew the buyout is 26 million euros, that's it, it's the same as Schalke has got bought out for. Teams like SK and Astralis could fuck around for a few more years and because they keep their margins down, they could sell for that 26 euro and make a profit from their League of Legends experience. They could actually leave with millions of dollars profit. So the, the, essentially, do you think people are doing that? Is that just a cynical take? Do you actually think there are orgs in the league which are just essentially sort of like keeping their foot in the door so they want to keep their LLC slot to sell one day, but they're not trying, for example, like the G2s of the world to potentially like win each time. They're not trying to like re-up. Like Fnatic, Fnatic must have spent big money on this off-season moot team you know this is a team built to win so what are your guys thoughts on this one like is lec got an issue in that sense our team's camping spots do you think does it matter i'd say i'd say i'd say the only one that actually so um doing that like kind of the blast on the way was actually misfits because they had um they had the rookie that you want to invest on, right? Once you once you have someone like VTO and you already have Razork and you know that you have players, you have you had very good players around the market that were free agent at the off season. Like you had you had Wunder that was available, you had Mickey's that got available because of the blow up of the G two sphere and stuff like this. So, like thinking about it, once you have your I would say uh, rookie pay payroll. Uh, very high quality kind of road diamond and you have this jungle that's loyal but it's part of like the higher bracket of the jungles and you have your mid jungle setup it's pretty easy to build a very competitive team with i would say not that much of a budget and if you look at it they have maintained pretty much the same thing uh they they could have replaced uh probably uh, they haven't imported at all even when here it left like they didn't try to get another import uh, so they've pretty much been what i would say it's not like terrible because they had good results but they've been in maintenance for the last two years right they've been they haven't been investing in any big names since the soas gorilla and sama and it's been three four years ago so it was 2019 right yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. yep yeah so this this for me because we can speak about Astralis, but i think that even with a lower payroll Astralis has tried to make move to make move this off season to actually better the team they actually bench players they hired ones they actually got Chelsea back and they look way better if you think about sk sk has been making a lot of changes i don't think they're just holding a spot they are they're trying to advertise it whether it works or not they're only the only german team in lcs i'm not a huge fan of sk but i don't feel like they're just holding a spot BDS, if they're just holding a spot, I don't understand anything because they just got in and they're trying to do things. So the only team that actually didn't show any ambition of getting great players, upgrading the roster, building a long-term plan, or getting any type of visibility within the sphere was Misfits. So I'm not that surprised that like it's among the candidates, according to the rumors, that they're going to leave. 
Uh, we were saying the same about Excel, but I think that Excel this year, not only they've in invested in good players, they have good results, and anything they do from like uh, content to merch and stuff like this is pretty good. Like they are trying to do things that make sense. They probably need an international win, like a relevant win for people to gather to them, but they're still trying, so I, I wouldn't put like Excel in the, in the bag of teams that are like just holding the door. I don't know what's your opinion Dom, on that. Yeah, I mean, I just think that there's like very clear teams that that want to sell eventually, right? Like to me, SK, Astralis, Misfits, like you, like BDS, I, I don't really know how to judge them. Of course, it's only been one year. Maybe things just didn't work out, but like where, like they didn't buy any players for that team. There was no like star players that they got. I mean, I guess Adam was like coming off some hype from Fnatic and he's like French player, French org. Maybe, maybe that like would, would be like a player that you want on your Swiss team old. because he was, Oh, it's Swiss, Swiss or it's, true? Yeah, they have an LFL. Yes, yes yeah. true. Actually, wait, were they bought by by a French guy or no? Isn't he Belgian? The guy owns it or something? No, no, he's a he's a Swiss a Swiss guy. Oh, he's like Swiss BDS Swiss belongs guy. to a Swiss guy, Latour. BDS oh. Latour. Okay. Oh wait, why are they why are they involved in all the French drama? I thought they were French work this whole time because all the I mean, because the NFL is French and Swiss essentially yeah. Swiss people in esports yeah. and like Belgians okay. just go with the the French by default. Yeah, I I I stand corrected. So maybe maybe that was like, but. I guess the, the overall point is that he was a super popular player, right? So yeah, maybe you want to have somebody like that yeah. who is on the up in terms of popularity in their org. So I think that that could be a draw. But then like their whole like their whole demeanor this entire time where they're like, oh, well, we got a two year plan in the second year. We're going to be good. It's like, dude, you guys are fucking one in 10. Like, it's not like you guys are almost competitive. You guys don't look like misfits from last year where it's like, oh, this video guy looks kind of good. Who maybe they could do something in the next year. Like you just have no faith in this this lineup. So, I mean, I just feel like that whole tier like you know what Misfits has been doing this whole time. You you could see it. Like, if you really wanted to contend, you wouldn't bring Mercer up and try to develop another player. Like, you have the players that are developed. Like, you already did that. You got Vedio when he was cheap, when he was coming from ERLs. Like, you don't have to do that again. Like, there's no reason. Like, import if you have to. Get somebody who's really fucking good on that team. So when I look at other players on this team, I, like, I just know that Misfits is trying to to get the bag. Same thing with Schalke. Schalke did the same thing. Like we, we see SK essentially doing the same thing. Like they're not putting budget into this team. They like, if somebody comes around and offers an insane amount of money for SK, you're telling me SK is going to keep that slot. Like, I don't think that they're making it like, look at, look at their, their branding and everything. No one's buying SK merch. No one's doing anything based off their league of legends team. So they're not in it as well. Astralis, like they made moves that are kind of good and they're like, try, but they didn't do it in a way that they had to ex like spend a lot of money. You know, they're not trying to win a title in LEC. So, I mean, I just see that like um, among LCS and LEC, as soon as they franchise, you suddenly got all these bottom feeder orgs that are just okay with mediocrity. And the problem that I see is that there's no fire because of no relegations. There's no fire of these teams to like actually become like good. Like you don't have to panic if you're BDS right now. Look at what BDS has done. Look at, look at their mentality right now. What did they just do? Bringing limit into the main team, bringing or dote into the Academy team. It literally looks like they want their Academy team to just succeed more in EU Masters, and they're just like, fuck the, the LEC team. Like, we're probably out of it anyway. We need to, like, win, like, seven games in a row. We probably have to win the yeah. remaining games to even have they're a probably right. chance. Yeah, they're probably yeah. right. So, the, the, like, but, like, you wouldn't do that if there was relegations well, on exactly. the line. Yes. Like, you would actually be like, oh, shit, we got to, like, actually get better. Because right now, imagine look, being them and then looking at, like, a team like LDLC. Imagine being BDS. I tweeted out after that game. I was like, I don't even think this BDS team, this, this BDS team, would, would would maybe not even be a top five team in LFL. And Sinkarov replied to me and he's like, yeah, we'd, we'd struggle to even make playoffs. That's what he said. So, but you I know, don't know, in the NFL, in NFL there is up and downs, for instance, like you have your first yeah, 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 division yeah. of NFL, right? Yeah. And, and so you have the Feb event that got hired by one of the teams that's in relegation to replace the mid laner because they want to, so they have fire, right? They, you, you, if if you're not winning, you're irrelevant for a whole year. So you got you gotta get it. I just feel like it's it's probably a big a, a broader topic, but I feel like the LEC has probably been a very good like the idea of franchising and partnership has probably been a very good idea. In the at the moment, it's been decided and it's up in the air. I'm not even sure of that, but at the moment, it's at the current moment. I feel like it has very little relevance because. No, you have a whole circuit of players. Players are protected now, right? They can play in LFL and make a decent living. You can even play in second division French league and make a decent living. I'm pretty sure in prime league in Northern League, it's probably MVP. It's probably not as as uh, expensive as the LFL because there is less visibility and stuff. But there is still like, you can make a job as a European player pretty much all across the board, right? And investors, uh, when they invest, like they should be rewarded by sports 
a branding fandom to be into into this league. The problem is no, they're stuck with this. Uh, if it's twenty five uh, million per, per per slot, right? It's a two hundred fifty million uh, asset that's standing there. That it's a security, right? It's just divided in ten parts, and they don't know what to do with it. Because the natural flow should be that the winner of the U Master go into an up and down. That should be the natural flow of any common sense, right? Should be okay. So Vitality B wins the the U Master. Okay, they can do the up and down. If they win, they have to rebrand. And now whoever in uh, uh, influencer, whether it's Mr Beast, Kameto, or some guy from I don't know like Germany that I don't never heard about, wants to actually sponsor this team and bring. All his fan base that never heard of League of Legends into the, the the world of esports and bring all the new fans to League of Legends that would benefit the the LEC and League of Legends industry as a whole a lot, right? That's for me what NAS failed to to do, right? By cutting like broadcast abroad and cutting sources of, of of viewers. This is the same thing as like nobody, no German is like, oh, I'm gonna watch SK because I'm German. Yeah, take the be biggest fuck. influencer right of German of Germany and tell him like, oh, there is Vitality B coming in the the, 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 the out of the LFL to the LEC because they want EU Masters and they want the up and down. Do you want it to be your team? And he's like, oh yeah, let's try this. And then suddenly you have like I don't know 500k or 300k new people that are actually interested in League of Legends. But that's that doesn't happen because oh, we have 250 million that we need to reimburse if we want to open the league again, and nobody yeah. wants to spend 250 million to that for that. So. I feel like it's kind of a dead end and this is kind of because I don't know whoever buys the slot if it's not like a huge audience team do you think it's gonna like legitimately like Thorin do you think it's gonna fix the, the viewer drop like there is like I, minus it, I don't think it will affect it almost at all personally like heretics like, heretics versus versus misfits how does that change yeah exactly it's irrelevant to me well, the only thing is I would say this I think basically you're being too kind when you're like saying like but they have made change like the problem here is like again it's not like I'm saying they've done nothing and they've spent like the literal minimum amount of euros you can spend to hire the cheapest players for four splits in a row and they're literally even saying like in interviews like we don't even care which fucking shit they're not going to be that ridiculous but what I mean is this if you get a spot in the LEC right you either think it's great business or you want to be a competitive team right we know it's not amazing business it's just you lose slightly less than the open circuit everyone's still losing money so now you're in a scenario instead where there's actually a world like i said where you might not lose money like spoiler Schalke, uh, Schalke will have made t maybe like 10 million euros from their time in fucking lec if you look how much they got at the end and how little they will have paid with those salaries they weren't paying big money by the way and they were getting even the good players like either when they were on the down of their career or they were just coming up as a rookie they weren't they weren't signing big names they signed people at the end like all these cons doing astralis and sk you just signed the guy who was half decent before because he's got nowhere else to go and all you need to know is this here's how in my opinion you can tell that these teams are it's not it's it's more that they go in the middle zabatine it's that they go right is this team like all right at the moment mm. maybe sign like a, a slightly more expensive player and we'll go for like the playoff run ah the playoff run's not there fuck it just put in the RL player be cynical I think they do that I think they try and like stay in the really like walk the fine line and spend as little as possible to like stay in a team and maybe just have a because the reason why is this it's given away with what you said it's what they do in the off seasons that gives them away Zabatine they mm. don't get a team like Misfits had and go wow look at what we've done here tell you what sign a fucking sick support player let's let's us get Mickey X the team's complete now let's go and fucking win the LEC. They don't. They go, gamble on another support from ARL. Did it work? Vethio, carry 1v9. You didn't win. Ah, oh, whatever. Get a different player in. Then in the Astralis team, do they sign like Jizuke and have like a, an identity in marketing and a site? Do they fuck? They go, try any mid laner. What? Try Nuke Duck when he's washed. Try White Knight. Fuck it. Try this Mayor guy. The, the Jayor guy. Bayor guy. Any other gay or guys. Like, anyone with fucking... They don't care, mate. They're not trying to sign the top players. They're just putting anyone in these fucking roles. So I think cynically, when they think they have a little chance at a run, they spend a little bit of money. I think every now and then they get one name. But, like, these teams look to me like they are phoning it in, mate. And the reason why it sucks is because when I go and look at the top of the RLs, like you're saying... Thing. These lineups are way better than fucking Astralis and SK Gaming. Like, what is this shit? Like, I go and look at the best ERL teams. They'll have like two or three players that are better than an SK player or an Astralis player. Like, it's ridiculous. So to me, it's not as simple. They're not making it obvious because if they made it too blatant, like Riot Avengers would have to kick them out. They can't go zero eighteen four splits in a row. But I do think these teams are mad cynical. Like, I, I'm, I, I'll probably make a video on it separately, so I'll go more in detail there. But I, I think this sucks for the LEC because, like I say, it yeah. means there are actually players who are too good to be an LEC but 
they can't play as a result. Like, like, what's the point in being these players like Crown Shot? Like, but I either sit on a bench or I go to an ARL or I can't, or I have to be good enough to be top four. Like, th- what's the incentive structure for me? You know. Uh, and the the thing I let you talk after. It's just I feel like the system is wrong because you see the very same thing in LCS. Like the no, thing I is, agree you agree. I'm, I'm fine. With it. I, I think it's a franchise. Yeah, that's yeah. a very that's a very important thing, right? Because you could say, oh, it's a European thing, right? But it's not. It's it's the system that's to blame. Like if you create a system that's by nature uh, making generating revenue only for the top four, four teams, but generating a huge uh, market value, right? Or market. Yeah, uh, by the way, what we're talking about now basically is the main problem with the esports industry as a whole. It's that right now you lose money if you try and get the top players. So it's only worth getting the top players if you literally a think you can win and b you can survive losing the money. Otherwise, what you do is you just try and stay as long as you can surviving and hope you get to the point where all the money comes, which isn't yet, obviously. Yeah, exactly. But you see that the system is wrong because yeah, of course. the same exact same problems happen in yeah, LCS. It's even probably more blatant in LCS. I don't know what you think, Dom. Yeah, it's definitely more blatant. I mean, like Immortals over the years. I hate, I hate to, to 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 bring you into this, but Immortals do, over do the years. Do you think? Dude, I got fired in week two summers. Yeah, you think I'm a well, fan? Yeah, it gives a fuck. Yeah, think, well, yeah. think, did, did you see? Did you see any poster in the back? Yeah, no, exactly. So I mean, Immortals, Dignitas, sure. Golden Guardians is the most blatant example of this. You I mean, see obvious what? one, yes, exactly. Golden Guardians lucked into actually having a competitive roster. Like, holy shit, this guy from fucking Turkey yes. is actually cracked, and this guy from OCE that we brought in suddenly became not an import, and he's cracked too. What the fuck? We're gonna just like win worlds or some shit, and then what do they do immediately? They're, they have one good split. They get like they they take a, a, a series off TSM and they lose to them the second time they play in the double elimination. They send them all to Immortals. Take the whole fucking team. We're gonna start over again. What did they replace them with? Yep, to hundred thieves, and then yeah, uh, yeah to hundred thieves. I don't know if I oh, you just went fine. Yeah, keep going. Uh, uh, but the the best part about that is who do they take? They take iconic and Niles. They start rebuilding. Maryville University. They start. They don't even go to like academy where it's like ah. Oh, I mean, like this is the equivalent of ERL. It's like going to ERL second division or going to like. I mean, I don't even know what it would be the equivalent to. Maybe it is ERL second division of like not even ERL second division of like LFL. The second division of like yeah, NLC well, open tour, shit. open tour. Yeah, it's it's like it's, it's the, the real amateur, right? It's like uh, you can just go with your team, like you go and land pretty much, right? Yeah, and exactly. the first one of these thing can go into second division. Exactly. So it's something like that because, I mean, the, the hierarchy should be like you have academy teams and then you have like amateur teams and then under that should be the collegiate teams. But they went to collegiate teams and put them in the roster and they sold it as we are developing our fucking talent. What did they do? They kicked the players like instantly. As soon as they could find better repl- like replacements, they just kicked them. So it wasn't like they even built up Niles and, and built up uh, Iconic and just like fucking, you know, suddenly they they had a long-term goal or they tried them for multiple splits. They kicked Niles after one split. Like he ran it down for one split, which is expected. And they just kicked him immediately. Like it wasn't even like they even tried. So man, I, I'm so tired of NA. It's like the same thing. I mean, even, even FlyQuest, I think FlyQuest got lucky with the players that they got. Like the fact that Takui is actually a beast. I don't think that they were real. I think that they, they, they prayed that he was a beast. I don't think that they scouted him. They're like, this is like the guy. And then we're going to like get these type, these stars around him. When you look at the creation of the team, if you wanted to be competitive right now, potentially like fight for a world spot, you wouldn't be getting somebody like Kumo as your top laner. Like you wouldn't be, that would not be the idea for what a team is because you need other pieces around him. You'd have Takui as like your import where it's like, oh, he has the potential to be the beast. He could be the video or something. And then you'd get an insane top laner. You'd be like, okay, so like let's, let's import a fucking top. Top is always weak in our region. Import a top, get the fucking team working like this. I don't know, man. When I see all these types of moves from, from teams, it literally feels like there's five teams in LCS that want to actually contend. One of them is ironically, I think TSM, even though they end up sucking and they use all their money, I actually do believe that they are trying to spend money to get a team that's good. Like, hey, they do you want can see by other sign Yeah. Yeah, I but agree. like Maple, like, I mean, I can, I, I believe that I they mean, are... They spend too much money not to say, like, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the price they pay for these players coming from uh, from Asia, right? It's, yep. it's, it's ginormous, so... They they doing it wrong, obviously wrong, but they're doing it at least right. You, you need to give them props for that. At least try it is the point. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I give yeah. them I give them the pass there. I feel like CLG lucked their way into a good roster right now, yeah, but they're doing gosh. the same thing. Like they're doing the same thing. This was supposed to be the down year for CLG. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. 
FlyQuest, CLG, Golden Guardians, Immortals, Team Dignitas. I mean, Golden Guardians setting their, selling their team to 100 Thieves. I mean, it's just like, you just know that these teams are not there to actually win and yes. win. Like, because they don't care. Like, they don't even think if they win that it will be a good return on investment. They're not going to be able to capitalize enough on the win to pay for what the whole roster is going to be. So you know that these teams are just waiting for somebody to come and, and give them a bag. I don't know. It, it's just really frustrating to watch because the problem is it makes a lot of the games bad to watch. Like so there's days of LEC, like for example, in that week four where Thor and I talked about it, it was just a horrible oh, day of games. Both, both of the days were just like, man, there's like almost nothing to watch here. There ended up being upsets. So that saved it. But just in terms of the matchups, there's nothing that you're hyped about. That's this is why I care about it. Here's the problem, Zabatine. I actually totally understand for the owners. Like, put it this way, if I was an owner and I owned, like, SK Gaming, far from the biggest org in Europe, I probably would do this strategy. This is actually the GM strategy I would do. It's why I actually praised, like, Astralis for gambling on the yep. Yonhoon guy. I think that's a great example of a very cheap move that could have an enormous upside. It's a great gamble. But the difference is this. As a viewer, I hated those Zabatine. Like Dom's saying, I want it to be 10 teams that are all trying to win. And so I actually have, like, a real battle... And I know everyone's working the hardest. And I know, for example, they're trying to put the best players in the league as well. Like if they pick this mid laner instead of Jizuke and Jensen and Niski, I want to believe that they actually think he's going to be better, that they think he is the next Vethio and they think he's going to be the MVP. I don't want it to be like, well, why did you get him then? Oh, it's just cheap. Just no one else wanted him, so he's just available. That's fucking whack. No viewer wants that. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't. <laughs>